Okay, hi! This is the last part of the tutorial for how to design your book cover to sort of look like the Penguin Clothbound Classics. So the first thing you need to do is know the dimensions of the outline that you're going to make. So because we're going to um, use these squares to make a rectangle and make the outline box, so we're just going to pretend that we want our box to be five by eight. So first you'll go in here. Oh, you'll go to shapes. You'll get a square because they don't have rectangles. And here's your square, but here remember the unlock function. So you'll go there and you'll enter in five by eight or whatever size you want. And then you'll make a second one copy paste and then this one you want to be uniformly smaller than this one because we're going to cut them out so for the second one it depends on how thin you want this line to be so if you want a sort of thicker line you could do maybe 4.75 by 7.75 and you'll click this one and then shift and select that one as well. Go up here to align, center them, then go down here to slice, because remember slice is sort of like your delete tool that we covered in the previous video. And then you've got an outline that's uniform all around because when we cut in the dimensions, we cut in the same size for each. So I would start with a thicker, line and then as you get more comfortable with your HTV ironing on you could go for thinner lines but sometimes the thinner lines when you're just learning how to weed sometimes you'll like break it or sort of stretch it when you're weeding out everything so a slightly thicker line might be better for your first try so now that you have this this is going to be your outline for both your front and back cover so you just select this and it's the same size so just copy paste so now you have your front and back cover and then you need to make the outline for your spine so your spine is still going to be um eight inches high or whatever height it's gonna be the same for the front back and back cover so let's just do eight here and let's just say that the spine is 1.5 inches Two inches or above or the, for the pretty thick books a lot of my spines end up being i think maybe an inch sometimes less than an inch and if so then you just you need to be careful with how much you put in and how small the text is that you're going to be putting in so this is 1.5 by 8 so then we're going to do the same thing here so we'll make the second box we'll do 1.25 oh darn it um that was wrong one okay so copy paste so then this one we will do 7.75 by 1.25 and then you can either click and then shift and click here for the second one or you can just select both of them and then you'll go up here to the line go to center go down here to slice then you have your three. So normally I make mine a lot thinner than this, but we'll just use this f just so you can you can see it better on the page. Okay, so let's just put these in order so you can sort of see. And then you could just go like this and just align them top. So they're all, okay. So when you're all said and done, it's going to have You'll, this will be the front, this will be the spine, this will be the back. And so the back is just going to have a pattern. The spine will have your title and your author if you have room for everything and maybe some design. And the front will have your title up here, your author down here, and then some design. Okay, so you can do any type of design you want, honestly. You could just do like a repeating pattern over the entire thing or you could do, you know, whatever kind of symbol that you think sort of symbolizes the book or just something silly. It's your book, so just, you know, put whatever you want on it. So, okay, so for this one, let's just recreate the 
cover design that I did for Love Hypothesis. So for that, I did a beaker and some hearts. So we're going to go over to images. And we talked about in the last video um, that if you have the all access cricket thing, I mean, this might even be a bigger number than in the last video. Um, all of these images are going to be free for you to use. And there's a lot of them. OK, so we'll do beaker. And then you'll go over here to orientation type, and you'll do cut only. So I think I chose this one. And when you click on it and see it's outlined like that, it will come and be down here. So then we'll do beaker, and then it will still stay there when I click on something else. So we'll do hearts. We can just use this. OK, so then see down here we have our beaker and hearts, and you go add to canvas. And obviously, these are way too big, so we'll make them smaller. So maybe something like that. And for this, here, I'm going to put this over here so you can see. Depending on how big you want your beaker to be, um, you can maybe take away these three holes if you don't want them to print. And if it's gonna, if they're gonna be too small of a design, that these little holes will be hard to weed out. So you'll just click on this here, go to contour, and you can just click that and see how it goes away. Click that, click that, and they go away. If you click this, then like everything goes away like that. So there. Okay. And if we want the hearts to be a little bigger, there. OK. So now that we have this, and that's sort of our design, together we will go like that. And you can go Attach. But it's actually probably going to be, oh, OK. So we'll leave it like that, actually. So we just have one over there doing its thing. And then this one obviously is way too big, so. Make that smaller, put that there. So um, normally I design for the front cover first. So what I first do is I add text. So let's just say this. And then obviously that's way too big. So I do anything font size between 15 and like 22 ish 15 is going to be pretty hard to weed so depending on your weeding skills i mean i would say for your first one if this is like go bigger instead of going smaller because weeding takes a little bit of time to sort of figure out and figuring out the um the settings for your cricket for cutting the different kinds of vinyl and whatnot and you'll just see that some kinds are much easier to weed than other kinds. So if you don't want it to be a total disaster your first time, I would go bigger. So let's even let's say 23. There we go. Um, and then font wise, you can just look for anything. I mean, whatever you like, you don't have to use what I use, you can you can do anything like is it Garmund? Here, just like you could use that. I think I use a different one, but I'm not sure where I got it. It wasn't in the system, so I don't want to tell you to use something that you won't be able to find. But that looks basically exactly the same as the one I use. Um, here, whenever you have this and you like click on this extra line comes up, and then you can't get to the top stuff. So I sometimes move stuff around. Okay. So anyways, okay. So I would put this on here. And then I would select those two, and I'd go here to align and center horizontally so it goes right in the middle. Because if I was to go center, it goes down there. And we don't want that. So, you no, know, just find your space. Ah. OK. 
center horizontally. Okay, and then once you have those, attach them so then it moves together. And now you need the, ah, there we go. So then, just put that down there. Select, align, center horizontally, attach. And then so you have sort of your outline for your, for this. So then you can start placing your objects or your little, you know, icons or whatever around and you know to work around where the author's name is going to be. And depending on how you space everything, you could always, you know, put the first name on top of the last name, bump things down or up. So if you, even though it's attached, if you click on this with the, on the arrows on your keyboard, you could go down, up, etc. And so then just because I already have the right um, size and font, I just copy paste and then copy paste. And then I just bring them over here. And then remember how if you um, press the um, shift and then click down, you're, so shift and then click down, it goes in increments like that, as opposed to if I just clicked down with my mouse without, without pressing anything, it would go, you know, woo. So it's back to zero. Okay, so shift, so you can get it to 90 easily. Okay, and then we'll put these in here. And then for, we'll select this whole thing and we'll do center horizontally so everything is all centered. Attach. Okay, so now you have the outline of your book covers. Okay, so now to make the pattern, you can do whatever you want. You can have what I used, to, and I would also suggest on my page, um, there is a link, I believe, to all the penguin covers. And if not, I have them all in my Amazon storefront where you can just like look at the covers to see all the different ones. Um, because um, Coralie does like a ton of different designs, but basically the, the main thing that's in common is that they just have this, um, this outline around them all. And then just, you know, all of her beautiful art inside of them and so I would just look at those to sort of get inspiration and you know put whatever you want in here <laughs> it's, it's a book for you so <laughs> put whatever and however you want because sometimes I've done you know little patterns where it's just um you know just like do do and you can see you know just like up and it's sort of the front one normally has a V of empty space and the back one is fully covered and then she has you know a little bit of the same design somewhere within the spine but I mean you know do whatever you want most of my spines now have different things than what's on the front and the back just because I think it's sort of fun to put other you know little parts of the book on it for fun because it just you know it reminds you of different parts of the book so Anyways, to get this sort of looking the way you want it to, instead of just, you know, willy nilly placing those around, it's sort of good to get a little a pattern going. So the best thing to do is going to be whoop, put them sort of depending on how far you want them apart, sort of line them up. And select them, but it's only these. Then go over to align and do distribute. Oh, distribute horizontally and distribute vertically because now it's at least evenly distributed throughout. So we're just going to attach that. And then also, I like to move down 
sort of move to different parts of my the workspace. So normally I have, I do all of this sort of, you know, making the designs and trying to make them fit on my first sheet and then I, and I save it and then I make a new one for when I'm ready to print it, but it's just, just the covers without all of these extra things. Anyways, okay. Um, okay. So, sort of a good, okay, so copy paste. So you could either line them all up sort of together, like here, I'll show you in just a second. Um, So I like to make extra copies of things in case I mess one up. So I have, I have to redo the whole thing. So anyways, okay. So now you're going to click on this design line, and the line, you can either like align everything left and then distribute vertically. So then everything's sort of even within however you want it to be. So then I just sort of come back in here and look at if this is going to be a good place to if this is going to work so see how i can then at least for the front cover i can take out this one this one this one and then for the back cover i can take off this one this one or the bottom i can take off this one this one and this one so that you don't you have the space in between and you can see the um the title and the author However, this really isn't, I would, this is, you could just be done here. You could just say, okay, that's cool, that works. However, it doesn't, it's not really even. See how this, this right, right here, it's not really even with this guy right there. Sorry, I tried to make my mouse big so you can see and now it's weird. Um, here, there. So if there was to be, if we were to delete these one, these three, it would sort of be, uneven up above. I mean, it might look okay down below. So this is, ba Ooh. this, I would call this like a starting point. So then you can play with these, you can play with the angle at which they, the angle at which they are. So trying to get them So that when you have all of them in a line, they it's more even on both sides. And another way that you could also do this, depending on your design, if you want you to have just the exact same design going throughout the entire thing, you're not going to have them tilting one way or another or flipping them with this. So if I was to just have this be des the design going up one side and then this being the design going up the other side, you can figure out how to basically just, here we can just delete all of these. You can try and figure out how to make everything sort of fit together so it looks like the even designs that all the penguins have. Um, so that's one way to do it is with the sort of angled um, distributing vertically and horizontally. Another way that you could do it if you're just going to have a straight design that's going to be not flipped either way is then to just take this guy and one, depending on how many you want in the middle, you could do one two, three, detach, you 
could also just put them all in a line. Line left, distribute vertically, attach. Okay, so another option is, I think you actually need one more to make this work. Oh wait, we want to attach these all together. Attach. And then we'll make a couple of these. Copy, paste, paste, paste. You need, I think, five, yeah. So then you would just start here and then do, you know, sort of in between. Actually, I would start with the middle. I would start with the middle one and just have that right in the middle. Okay, so those are in the middle, and then put three here, and then you want these three to all be aligned, and then you take these, and you could put them here. That. And so then get those two, align them top, and then you take those. And we're, we've selected, we're just selecting the, um, the beakers, the little square is not being selected. Go here, align, distribute them horizontally so everything's even. And then you look at what you've got and see if... It works to cut out the, like here, if I just took out these three, it would work. But up here, one, two, three, um, if I just took out those three, it wouldn't work. So your options are to either move up the title or take this and make the space between them a little bit smaller. So detach. Because see how you'd want this one down a little bit? So actually, wait, hold on. There's a few options. Okay. So you could either leave it like this and delete this, this, and this, and have the name down there. And then you could also, the other option is if you just wanted to delete this, this, and that, then you could change the title. I'm just going to move this to the side. So for the title, This one's still attached, so sometimes when it's detached. There we go. You should sure just play around with things until they all fit. So this process normally takes a while, which is why yeah, it can just take a while to get all of the spacing um, to work for you. Okay, so let's see. So that would work. So then you just, okay, so since we're, we'll, this is, we'll just use this. Okay, so first you're going to copy and paste it because you need a back, attach the back. And that's just something we're going to use in a minute. So for this, you go back here and you see what you need to delete. So this, 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 
uh, that and that. Okay, so to delete things, it's easiest to just detach. Because if I was to delete it when they were all attached, I would delete the whole line. Okay, so. Okay, so something like this. This, I don't like the look of personally. I would still, f like, um, futz around with it probably for another half an hour or hour, but you get the idea. So basically you just keep making it sort of, you know, inching them up and down until they look how you like. And then once you've got a design that you like, sometimes you can just use that depending on the size of the cover, if they're sort of similar um, measurements, you can just use a previous cover as a template for other covers of similar sizes. Um, so then, okay, so then we would just take this whole thing, I'm going to attach it, and then I'm going to, I always make a copy of it just in case something goes wrong somewhere, I just sort of put it off to the side and in case I mess this up, because you're going to do the next part, you actually need to weld it. And once you weld something, it's almost impossible to unweld it because, okay, so just quickly, if you didn't watch the previous video, the difference between welding something and attaching something. Okay, so even though these are all the same color, oh, how would I show this better? Okay, here, I'll show it over here. Um, okay, here, just really, really quick, weld versus um, attaching. Video. Okay. Okay, so if if I attach them to, together but then wanted to cut them, so we'll and then wanted to cut them, when I went to cut them, even if they looked the same color, when I went to go make them and cut them out, it would cut this entire, the entire pink image out, exactly how it looks, the pink image. And then it would cut the black image out exactly how it looks. But because they were attached, they'd be on the same sheet, so they'd look the same color. But so I would have in this guy, I would have like this line and this line, like this line going through here, that line, all of these lines, even if I just attached them. However, if I welded them, then they don't become it's basically just sort of like mel melting or soldering something. So once you weld them, it all becomes one shape. So it wouldn't do this cut line here and like that cut line there. It would go cut up, cut up. It would go cut like this around. And so all of this, it wouldn't be extra cuts in here. So anything messy like that. And so that's what you also want when you're doing you're doing this because if I wasn't to weld it all together then there would be all of these cuts up in this border and it would look absolutely ridiculous and you'd probably accidentally like um, weed them weed out parts of the border so once you've attached it then you need to weld it so combine go back down here to combine and go to weld which is why we have this extra attached copy over here in case I mess up somehow with this one and then there's a couple ways to clean up your borders. So the way that I have been doing it, um, come get your shapes. So one way that you could do that is easy. You could just make one of these, go like this, line it up. Always do different colors. And then just, you know, go here until it's basically like that and just select this and select this and do a slice and you'll see you've got a clean line and then you do the same on the top and around the sides 
what I sometimes do. And I don't know, actually, this might take more time now that I seeing that because this is pretty fast is I just make um, so this was five by eight so what I do then for this as I make this the original box was 5.8 so I make this 4.99 sometimes 999 I don't even know if it's that accurate by 7.99 and then let's make this. Um, and then I do another one, which I turn to a different color. And this one I just make bigger because this is sort of going to be, I'm going to use this as like a template to cut out. So I select this and I select this box. I center them, slice them. And then I just sort of arrange this box, but I go in a lot. So I go into about 300 or 400 and see how there's this little line up here. So when I was to cut it, that little bump above would be there. So I sort of just with your, um, because the red box is selected. So just with your up and down arrows on your keyboard, you can just sort of see once the red there is over all the black so that it's going to be cutting within space and you just check the top and the bottom and the sides so that everything is going to be cut oh and one other thing i forgot to say is um make a copy of this because you're going to use this for your back as well so no need to make it twice so then once i've lined everything up i zoom out so that i can select both of these slice And you've got your outline. Delete those. So then front cover is done. So then for the back cover, I think these are just attached knot. So always keep just a copy that's not welded together because you never know when something's going to mess up and you're going to want to come back and just not start all the way over with building your pattern and whatnot. So this is just, you know, the off to the side extra stuff. So now we will take this, this, it's not quite as important for lining up the back cover. You can just, you know, make it sort of even. Go over here, weld it. It's all one color. I'm going to make another copy of this just in case something messes up. Go down here. And we're just going to so that corner is good check all the corners everything looks good okay so then select whole thing slice delete so there you go those are not all the same color right now so let's just make them all the same color okay and then you do the same thing for the spine but with the spine you can put whatever you want in it but it's the same deal with just you know slicing making one of these guys or just slicing just doing a slice between if there's stuff hanging off the side but sometimes, since I do different kinds of designs on my spine, sometimes everything's within the spine. It's not like coming off it. And I know that's not exactly how the penguins do it, but yeah, it's fine. It's my book. <laughs> like I'm not making these for anyone else but myself. So, you know, just do what makes you happy. Um, okay, so now that I've done all of this, I save this entire thing with all of my, you know, extra random in case I messed up emergencies. And normally I also make a just a copy of the line, the back empty box, but you sort of have that here. Anyways, okay, so save this because something could go wrong and you just wanna have your sort of, your rough draft saved. So you've saved this. Now you go up here and you check and you can't, 
as long as that means the most recent thing is saved. So then I just take these three, I highlight them, copy, go up here to new, and then paste them. So it's just this, nothing else. And for this, we can always detach so it should um, print together. So now that we have just the welded drafts, and one thing to check is that they're all the same color so that when you go up here to make, they'll all be put onto the same mat. Otherwise, if you have these in slightly different colors, when it arranges it, it will arrange it by different colored mats. Oh, here's mats here, I'll just show you right now. Um, so say that one was red. If I go up here to make it, what did I do? Okay, so if I go up here to make it, it's going to have, see this thinks that I have red HTV and this one thinks I have black. So you'll have to like mess with, you know, putting this with all cuts on, it, it's just annoying. So just, as long as they're all going to be the same color, just make sure that they are the same color. Okay, go to make. Okay, so it's still being silly. But what you can do, first of all, mirror on, always mirror on, because if it doesn't, your words are gonna be backwards. But what I do, just so that I don't have to rearrange anything is, Let's just, mm, is that even? All right, put that down here, put this down here, because you can see six is the middle. So then we'll go to this one, go over here. So technically they're not taking up anybody's space. So even though right now it wants to put them all on different mats, you just load your one piece of HTV onto your mat and then it will, it will print the first one. It will print like this book cover and this book cover and then want to unload the mat and then have you reload the mat. But then you just, you know, unload and reload and then it will print this side and nothing will cut over itself. So that's, that's fine. And then depending on how big your books are, if you're doing like a really big hardback, normally hardbacks are, the design is big enough that you need to end up using two sheets of HTV because between the width of both of them, they both the covers won't fit on one piece, so you'll have a, you'll have some extra. But always keep your scraps because you never know when you'll need them for like fun little end paper designs. Anyways, okay, so here we go. Um, and just double check mirrors on, double check mirrors on. Go to continue, and it will also remind you if you're if you click that you're using HTV. Oh, let me just turn this on. Okay, so I have all of these saved because I only use iron on. So let's just say we're gonna do everyday iron on. And here it even sh it even reminds you. Even though it reminds you, I've still forgot to turn on mirror on sometimes. So make sure mirror is turned on and the shiny side is face down. And I always just do default pressure, depending on what kind of machine you have. I think the airs don't show up like this. I don't think the airs show up like this. And then you'll just go through the steps that it tells you and then you just press start on your machine. So, okay, so that's how you make a cover. Um, I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any more questions.